Hey guys, this is Dr. Patrice Carter and I came by today to tell you to mind your business. You need to mind your business. And what does that mean? I want you to get a pen and paper and listen up. Mind your business. So I have been holding this word for a while now. Um, I kept trying not to release it because I want to make sure it wasn't me, um, that I wasn't coming out of flesh or saying the wrong thing at the wrong time to the wrong people. But that said, I do believe that I'm released to share this now. And I want to share it by way of sharing a vision that the Lord gave me. So the Lord gave me a vision about a month or so ago. It's probably been about six weeks or so. And in that vision, um, the Lord showed me driving down this two-lane highway. And as I was driving down this two-lane highway, the first time... I remember coming around a curve and I saw a construction site to the left. And when I saw the construction site within the dream, I could hear myself think, I'm not going to go that way because, of course, it was a construction site. I would not be able to um, continue on because I would come to, you know, a place where I couldn't go forward anymore. So that was the first night. Well, the next night I had the same vision again, down the, coming down the same street around the same curve, and I saw the construction site. And as I was coming upon the construction site, the car veered to the left and began to go into the construction site. And I'm like, oh my God, because I did not plan on going to the construction site. And as it continued to drive, my eyes closed involuntarily, and but I was still behind the wheel. And I remember um, trying to slow down or stop. The car wasn't going really fast. But I remember opening my, trying to open my eyes, but I could feel the Holy Spirit literally pull my, my eyelids closed um, firmly so that I was not able to reopen them. And I just prepared myself for this massive crash because, again, it was a construction site. You're talking heavy equipment, you know, all this stuff. So what happened was I didn't crash into any heavy equipment. I crashed into some straw. Um, there was not nothing calamitous. Um, all I heard and saw in the spirit was these little tiny sprockets like little nuts and bolts ping ping off the top of the car so i didn't crash and then in the next phase of that i saw myself being airlifted but not medevac airlifted because if you're medevac like you're injured you're in like this bucket thing and you're kind of horizontal and you're being lifted up with like a, a neck collar and all that stuff it wasn't like that i was being lifted up vertically um into this black helicopter and I just sat with that vision for a very long time, but then the vision began to come to pass because in my life, I felt like things started to just be, um, you know, under construction, turning into a whole, looking like a mess, like just, you know, not crashing, but just off, off course. And the Holy Spirit would consistently remind me, remember I showed you, you crashed into this construction site. And so as I talked with other uh, fellow prophets and... I, um, you know, sat with it. The Holy Spirit said to me, you're in a, in a construction, a deconstruction phase and construction. So when you go through construction, you know, there's sometimes depending on what's there, they have to take things down. They have to, um, you know, break things apart or they have to assemble something brand new. But as my friend, Dr. Michelle, Apostle Michelle McCormick shared, amazing things come out of construction new avenues, new roads, new ideas, new innovations, new etc. But also in the midst of my particular crash, God was saying that also by way of another prophet, it was going to be a soft landing, like it wasn't going to be anything calamitous and that he was buffering it because he was elevating and lifting me up above that place because I'm going somewhere else. So how that manifested itself in business or in our life was it felt like there was just there was nothing like there was no clients there was no money at one point i was like um how are we gonna pay the bills you know i'm having to get extensions on things this is just me being transparent because i don't i don't care about sharing stuff you guys know <laughs> right um but it just felt like lack it felt like loss and i'm like god what is happening but i recognized that he was trying to really grow our roots deep in faith like deep faith roots and that I already know wealth is our portion. So it was, it's not about the money. It's about 
what you believe God for. And it's more about what is God trying to do? What does he want from our life more than he wants to give us money, dollars and cents because he knows we need that. What is it that he's trying to get out of my life? So he was trying to get out deep faith. He was trying to get out, continue to just tie, bind me and Dalton together even more tightly as a threefold cord that is not easily broken. Um, he was trying to see where was my heart in the matters of money? What was I going to do when there wasn't anything? Was I still going to believe? Was I going to turn back? Was I going to pause? Was I going to shift? Was I going to do something different? Was I going to pervert the journey and the path that I know that I'm on? Was I going to stop? The answer is no, sir, no, ma'am. And so even in the midst of this, what felt like loss and lack, um, and the bill still being due, uh, Wells Fargo still wants their money at the end of, on the, you know, at the first and the fifth of the month, PWC, Public Works Commission, electric bill still got to get paid, cell phones still, <laughs> you know, all that. But there was also client work and there were client opportunities and things that were coming forth that needed to be attended to. Like I still had to show up for, we still had to show up for our clients. We still had shoots. We still had to go serve coffee. And we're like putting pennies together, putting dollars together, like, you know, to go out and do these things. But I just kept hearing the Lord say, be faithful. So just continue on. So when people are like, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm hanging on. I'm continuing on. That was my response. I'm, I'm pressing forward. I'm pressing in because I'm not stopping. So that said, um, we kept doing this. This has been some months now. Like this has been, this is recent. So um trying to make sure I want to say this the way that I feel that I'm supposed to share it so what happened is um a previous client reached out to me and she said Patrice are you still um certifying and training coaches I said yes I am not because she didn't know or couldn't find it on my website because hey that's under construction too like we're shifting to a whole new model so now even my business is completely deconstructed but you you wouldn't know that from all intents and purposes from looking because I'm still working my business. I'm still putting out courses. I'm still putting out that I'm doing courses. I'm still putting out that I'm auditing courses for people. I'm still coaching. I'm still networking. I'm still having sales calls. I'm still doing all the things. I'm still building courses for clients and, and getting new business, like just working it out over here. And so I said, yes, I am. And she said, okay. And she kind of went silent for a little bit, but I followed up because, hey, fortune is in the follow-up. So I followed up and I said, hey, I'm just touching base. Are you still, um, you know, what questions can I answer around your question to me about what I'm, you know, if I'm still certifying training coaches, I sent her the information and she said, yes, I'm just trying to make a decision about how many coaches we want to send forward, et cetera. So a couple weeks pass, I follow up again, maybe two or three weeks. I thought maybe not even that long. I'm not sure, but two to three weeks. And I follow up again. I said, hey, just touching base. Did you ever make a decision about who you want to send forward for the coaching? And she said, yes, we want to send five coaches through the certification. Now, this client is um, someone that I just, you know, really like a lot. And at the same time that I certified her, I certified her family. So it wasn't just one coach in the family. It was a number of coaches in the same family in the same business. So she's watching this. God bless you. Shout out to you and your family. Thank you for your support and for the opportunity to walk with you guys. Um, so then, so that was years ago. I certified, equipped, and trained them. It has to have been like three plus four years ago. It's been some time. So for her to come back around and say, would you do this for my staff is just so like encouraging. And so she, that day said, I want to bring five people through and I'm, you know, let's get, I'm ready to get started. And I'm like, shut the front door. So she wants me to certify and train Christian, five Christian life coaches under our company that are affiliated to her company. And this is five coaches and our rate right now for the coaching is $29.97. So you do the math. I was in shock because I had just come out of this place where it's like, I don't know how I'm going to pay the, we don't, we're going to pay the mortgage. How are we going to pay these electric bills? You know, how are we going to pay the cell phone bills? Like you, when you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have those deep highs, deep lows. I'm not prophesying that over you. I'm just saying, but if you've been in business for a while, you're going to have some low periods, some lulls <laughs> in income and in clients, but you got to keep going. So I say all that to say, so she hit go on that day. She um, paid the invoice and we moved forward and it has been an amazing and incredible experience. And I'm just blown away by God because he just turned the switch from like negative zero to like 
you know, five figures overnight. And I'm like, Father God, in your holy name. And so I say that to say, you have to mind your business. You have to mind your business. And so if I had not been minding my business, meaning tending to my business, paying attention to my business, paying attention to God in my business, paying attention to God's people, paying attention to my email and being focused, I would have missed that. I could have missed that because if you're not minding your business, if I wasn't minding it, I could have been. And there were days I was low. I was like, oh my God, this is so hard. This is, this season sucks, <laughs> you know, but God, I'm going to praise you anyhow. And when I can't praise you, I'm just going to cry out to you. I'm just going to cry and I'm going to believe you because there were tears. There was like, what is God doing? Okay, I'm too far in this thing with him to think that he's left me here. And this is the end for me. This is the end for us. It's not, um, I'm going to cling to my faith. I'm going to talk to those that are prayer warriors that can, you know, pray me through this. I wasn't running after a word because the Holy Spirit was giving me. He was like, I already told you what it is. You know, you're in a construction period. You're in a deconstruction period. You're in a transition period. I, you went to the left because I'm going, I'm going in a different direction and I'm cutting a new path. So I say all that to say whatever that resonates with you. Because I don't want to tell you what you hear in me sharing this. But I want you to mind your business. Okay? So how all this came about, this word that the Lord gave me that I feel he gave me, is I'm reading this book. It's called... Prophetic Forecast by Joshua Giles. Prophetic Forecast by Joshua Giles. And I got to this section I was reading and I was like, man, this is so many entrepreneurs that I know. And so this is no shade, but this is an admonishment. This is an exhortation. This is an encouragement. This is assist, get your business going to all the women and men that I know that are in business that need to hear this tough word, tough love. It's not a tough word. It's just tough loves get up you gotta mind your business okay so on page 85 this is in the chapter on monetary systems and he's talking about the fact that money systems are changing and there's the war with mammon and in the section that is in that chapter he is saying here that I'm going to read on the page, Monetary Systems. There is a coming famine like the world has never seen, and we must put our trust in God and not things. He says, to win the battle against the false, false god Mammon, which is the demon god that's over the monetary system in the earth, we must have a pure and submitted heart before God. We must end our chase for money and begin seeking the Lord. After Jesus speaks of mammon in Matthew 6, 24, he goes on to give instructions relating to money and possessions for every believer to follow which is Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seeking the kingdom of God is a lifelong assignment as you pursue your purpose in him. To seek his kingdom is to seek his rulership. It is to surrender your life to his supreme authority. And so he defines righteousness as the Greek word meaning equitable character, justification, or to be in right standing with God. And he says we do that by submitting ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Okay, so that's, I think we got that. I think we can all agree on that. But this is the part that I'm going to read that I underlined that I want to challenge you with. Everything you need will be, so let me read this rest. It is important to remember that you cannot get so wrapped up in the gift that you forget the one who gave the gift. So the gift is the finances, but God is the ultimate provider, Jehovah Jireh, as we know. He says, Joshua, prophet Joshua writes, everything you need will be attracted to or added to your purpose as you go. Okay, so let me read that again. Everything you need will be attracted to or added to your purpose as you go. Are you going? Are you in motion? Go implies motion. Go is a verb. It's action. If you don't have the money you need, it is because you are not carrying out your assignment. Money is attracted to your assignment. Come on. I'm going to, I will shout out on that. So when I read this, I was like, oh my God, I want to come live. I want to tell my sisters and brothers, you got to mind your business. You got to go. Because if you have lack, there's something that is not going on that you're not doing. Okay. So 
the reason I shared about us having lack because some of us may be in transition. Some of us may be in a deconstruction or a reconstruction or a construction phase where God is trying to, again, work out a deeper level of faith. He's elevating us. He's dismantling some things that we were already doing that were working, that were successful, but now he wants to do something new. So he's taking us up higher. But in the midst of that, he's still going to bless because of the work that we have done prior to that. So that was the example I gave when the coach came to me and said, are you still doing this? I planted those seeds in her life four years ago. I planted the seeds in this business 15 years ago. So consistency, are you being consistent? Are you going? Are you getting up every day and doing something as it relates to your marketplace ministry? Mind your business, not tried it for one or two weeks or even four weeks and it didn't work. Nobody signed up for your masterclass. Nobody came to your event. If one person comes, I'm having the event. If no person comes, I'm having the event. Why? Because sometimes God is just checking our heart posture. He's just checking our faithfulness. He's just checking our consistency. Have you given it away? Have you thought about giving away services, giving away products so that you can do sow those seeds into what you need God to do, into growing the kingdom beyond getting paid for it? And if you have, have you continued on? I, I, I need you guys to pull over and, and mind your business, like pull over and look and figure out. The Bible says to know the state of your flock. That's in, I think, in the book of Proverbs. So I'm going to look it up and put it in the comment section. But that said, what are you doing? And I, I just feel this so strongly. Like there's some of you that have created beautiful courses. You have fully established websites. You have stores, storehouses. You have earrings. You have books. You have services. You are a mentor. You have everything that you need to create wealth. Because Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, God has given us the power to get wealth. But... You're not consistently using it. You're not consistently showing up. When you go out, are you networking? Are you sharing with people what you do? Are you passing out business cards? Are you asking for the business? Are you asking for the money? Are you asking the right amount of money? Are you asking a little bit of money because you're still scared to ask for more money for what you deserve? Are you going live? Are you letting people see your face and connect with you? When I walk into a business, a storefront business, and no one greets me, they don't even acknowledge that I'm there. I'm not spending money there. So how can anybody spend money with you? They don't even know you. So I'm saying that to say, you got to mind your business. All right, you have to mind your business. I feel that this word is for somebody specifically. And I want to read it again. It says, everything that you need, I'm talking to you, will be attracted to or added to your purpose as you go. If you don't have the money you need, it is because you are not carrying out your assignment. Money is attracted to your assignment. Are you hosting events? Are you having classes? Are you having workshops? Are you inviting people to come and see behind the scenes of your business and learn about what you're doing? Are you talking about it? Are you going live on social media? Are you sending out email blasts? Are you putting out press releases? Are you out in the community? Are you asking your warm market to help you get the word out? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? So then he goes on to the next um, chapter, which we're um, doing this as a Bible study with a group of um friends and fellow marketplace ministers and so the chapter that we're covering this week is technology resurgence this is my jam because you guys know that not only do i certify and train me and dalton christian life coaches we also uh, create and help service-based entrepreneurs who want to package our expertise into digital courses and online schools so we are in a tech space we are a digital course creation agency um, and we do all things digital courses. So I help other people write their curriculums. We help write their classes. We help stand their classes up. We use our multimedia business to record their um, their educational videos, etc. So we are in a tech space. So if I have written a course for you, if you have written a course for yourself, if you are on an online platform and you are offering coaching services and you're selling books and you're selling digital downloads and you're mentoring through that online space, you are in the tech space. And Prophet Giles says in Prophetic Forecast that there is a tech resurgence coming. So when I read this this morning, I was like, man, we got to get on it. I have to really put this word out here because I just felt it again. And so in this chapter, uh, one of the things that he says 
as it relates to a resurgence in tech, of course, he starts out talking about artificial intelligence, but he talks about, he had this vision of wearable technology. So I'm not going to talk about that, but there was a section in that chapter, in that section of the chapter that I wanted to talk about. And it says information is now the most valuable commodity in the world. It is literally worth more than the price of gold, silver, and other precious metals. The tech and information age has made information so readily accessible. We are now in an age where the masses demand knowledge at their fingertips. The masses, de masses demand knowledge. This will become a multi-billion dollar industry. Come on, what are we doing? So for those of you that have written courses and you're not selling your course, your course isn't selling, why? You're coaching, you have a, a platform, your website where you're offering coaching, you're offering downloads, you're offering eBooks, you're offering books, you have an Amazon store, you got a KDP site, you're um, you know, doing all the things, like you have all the things, but you're not doing all the things. I'm telling you right now, you have got to move, you've got to mind your business. You got to mind your business, sis and bruh, because it is time. And we don't want to get left behind. We don't want to be found trying to get ready. We need to get ready so we don't have to. We need to stay ready so we don't have to be ready. Or be ready. How, how does Andy Menino say that? He said, I stay ready so I don't have to get ready. So you don't want to be trying to get ready when the client reaches out and says, hey, can I order 10,000 of your, you know, your widgets or I want to have you and your team that you haven't put together yet that you know you're supposed to come out and do this training and I want to pay you $50,000, but you haven't even put the team together yet. Or you don't have the platform. I want to hire you to come train our staff and we have $100,000 in our budget we need to spend, but you haven't put the training together. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And so I want to read this scripture to you. I was looking for it um, early, which is why you hear me going through my pages and I am going to if I can't find it while we're on here I'm gonna um, send it to you but basically it's where there was a prophet and he was talking to a king and he told the king to strike the um, strike with his hands to strike the tip of the arrow and so the king struck it, but he only did it like three times. And the prophet was mad because he said, you should have struck it until it broke. Like you, you want to, like, basically you shouldn't have let up. You shouldn't have let up on your enemy. You shouldn't have let up on the enemy of procrastination. You shouldn't have let up on the enemy of fear of success or fear of failure. You shouldn't have let up on the enemy of lack because regardless of whether we have lack in our life right now or not, or the bills aren't getting paid or we don't have money. We still got to show up. We still got to go to work. We still need to do the business. Me not having what I needed in that moment um, or having it at the date that I needed it um, didn't mean that I got to just stop. You know, so just because we stop, I mean, just because things are hard doesn't mean we stop. It doesn't mean that I get to take a day off or because business is slow or nobody's calling. I need to go out and look for business. You think about the Bible says... Um, I'm going to put it, the scripture in the comments because I'm not able to find it. I don't want to hold up the video. But I think about the scripture that in that same section of Matthew where it talks about how God provides for the birds. Well, he provides for the birds, but they got to go get the seed off the ground. They can't sit up in their nest and wait for him to drop the seed. Of course, he could. But also, how does he provide it? Because I had to think about this one day. My mom loves birds. Shout out to Patricia Stewart. So my mom loves birds. And so she will put out, like she goes and gets yummy seeds. She doesn't get just trash seeds. She gets like the cra the delicious seeds for them, like the best bird seeds. She gets bird feeder. She gets the little blocks of honey. She gets the nectar for the hummingbirds because she loves feeding them because she loves watching them and seeing them. So think about it, how God has placed birds on people's hearts. So that they will provide for them. So he's providing for the birds, not only through the land, not only through the trees and the, the things that fall from the trees. He's providing also by way of people. So I'm looking at you, person who's prideful and you struggle to take from people. You struggle to ask for help. Um, you struggle to let people help you. So you're doing everything yourself. 
that was me. I'm a reformed. I, I need, I love having help now. Hey, I'm letting everybody help. <laughs> Do you want to help? You can help. You can help. You can help. It's not a problem. And so God has positioned people to help you. But then when the help comes and the people actually are helping, are you applying the help? Are you applying what they've given you? Are you putting it into action? And so I just want to give you guys the, the um, example of our Savior, Jesus. Jesus was still working on the cross. Jesus was on the cross working while he was dying. While he was suffering, he had a thief on the left and a thief on the right. And one of the thieves didn't believe that he was the Savior, that he was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But the other one did. And he said, if you are the Christ, when you get to your kingdom, remember me. And he, Jesus looked at him still holding on. That's how the word goes by third day. I love that song. He says, still holding on with tears falling from his eyes. I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. Come on. So there's nothing so bad that we're not going through, that we're going through, that we can't do what God has positioned us to do in the earth, in the marketplace. What are you doing? You need to mind your business. Okay, so if this has resonated with you, I hope this has. I hope that you take this with the love and the admonishment and the encouragement that I mean it. Because I'm not coming for anybody. I'm coming for you to get ignited and to get up. Come on, we got to get up. We got to go. We got to move. I'm not even talking about because it's fourth quarter. I'm not dealing in chronological time. I'm talking about Kairos. It is, this is a Kairos moment. And I'm not trying to cheer you up to get energized for the day and you get boom and then you just stop a couple weeks from now. You need to mind your business until God calls you home. Period. Mind your business until the Lord calls you home. Because it's about souls. There are souls attached to what we're doing. There are people's lives entrusted to our lives. And so if I had not shown up because I was having a low moment because things were financially tough, and I just didn't know where our next dollar was going to come from. But I already knew what God told me to do. He told me to get this coffee trailer and go roll out in these streets and be a mobile evangelism tool. Be a light in dark places and sell amazing coffee. Shout out to my love, Dalton Carter, and my partner, my business partner and collaborator and best friend, Dalton. Um, he told me to pop open um, Breakpoint Coaching Collective, LLC, and help people put out these digital courses. He told me to be a certified Christian life coach and do the same for others, get them certified. He told us to make these um, amazing movies and films and commercial drone photography and videography through our multimedia company. Come on. So I have equipment. I have all the things I need. Whether I have money in my pocket, I have what I need to do. I have my position. I know my purpose. I have my equipment. I have my instructions from my Heavenly Father. I know what to do. So me, the outcome of that, that's on him. That's his responsibility as the CEO of my life. But my job is to show up and work. Mind your business. So I want to know, does this, guys, does this resonate with you? Like, what are you going to do? Okay, what are we doing? I want to hear some feedback. Drop me a line in the comments. Send me a DM. If you're offended, um, which I pray you're not, I'm going to say like Anicia Lee, Evangelist Anicia Lee, my sister, take it up with daddy. Okay, because this word is not meant to be offensive at all. This is a clarion call to you to say get up and mind your business. All right, God bless you guys and I'll see you soon.